there, Richie Vitale here. I want to talk to you a little about why I got into birding and kayaking and fishing and anything but music. Uh, it's not that I don't love music, it's just that I needed to do other things as I matured, things that I enjoyed. Now the funny thing about nature and bird watching is it was always there. I was always conscious of it, but I didn't really pay attention. Initially, I bought the M50 camera. That's this baby here. And mostly for promo shots and uh, just walking around Center Park. And on Facebook, a friend of mine, another trumpet player, Sam Zambito, I saw his pictures of birds. And I said, you know what? That's what I want to do. So um, I began with this camera, as I say, initially uh, taking promo shots. It's got a 300 millimeter lens and I can go no further. And a crop sensor of 1.6, which I'll explain later. So that is going to be the minimum you're going to need for birding to get the kind of reach uh, to get warblers high up in a tree. Uh, then I ended up buying um, the Canon SX70. It's a lot cheaper, but a lot of birders like to use this camera because the zoom is 21 millimeters to 1,365, which means if I want to get a shot of a landscape or a group of people in a picture, uh, it's very easy to get that wide shot. And if I want to get the zoom to catch a bird high up in the canopy, this will do the trick. Now the thing about this SX-70, it's not very expensive, it's about $600. Um, it's expensive, but in camera terms, it's not expensive. You can't replace the lens, it's what it is, but I don't see any necessity to do that. Normally, a zoom on a camera, you move the zoom dial like this. You're moving it left and right. This one is very smooth, but with the Canon, it's very simple. You move a lever, and that's full zoom. So you could pick this up really quickly and take a picture of what you want. There's very little lag time, and I get a lot of shots with this camera that I wouldn't get with either of these. But having different cameras is like painting with different brushes. So sometimes you want a small brush stroke or something more grainy or a larger brush stroke, so you use different brushes. So all of these cameras are very dear to me and I don't feel like I should trade one in for the other. Uh, the thing about the sensor on this is uh, it doesn't catch a lot of light. It's one quarter the size of a full frame sensor. Full frame sensors are uh, what were on, what is on DSLR cameras, the ones that use mirrors, the original camera. And pretty much that's what everyone goes by, the original cameras, the mirrored cameras. That's what we compare to. So a sensor that's one quarter the size of a normal size sensor on a DSLR means if I'm in dim light, I'm going to have a problem. So I'm usually out in the afternoon, maybe between two and four, taking pictures. It's not an issue. But let's say I want to take a picture of Flock of the Owl at 8 p.m. And even if I set this camera for two, three seconds, the sensor isn't big enough to catch enough light. So the picture will come out grainy and dim. Nonetheless, this is my go-to camera. It's very light. I walk around Central Park like a mental patient for two, three hours. I could even do five hour um, walks and hardly feel a thing. I think of it as a glorified iPhone. It's a little more complex, but not terribly and um, really user friendly. 
So I decided to upgrade because I saw some of my friend's pictures. Shout out to Sam Zambito, uh, another fine trumpet player and a wonderful birder. And he had these pictures of birds just taking off and uh, I couldn't figure out how you could get a picture, you know, with just as a bird's landing or just as it's catching a fish or just as it's taking off or just pre-taking off. So this camera, the Olympus OMD EM1, has something called Pro Capture. So this camera, when I push the shutter button, will take a predetermined amount of pictures that I set into the camera. So when I push the shutter, it might take 20 shots before I actually push the shutter button. So if a bird is taking off and it's already in the air, you push the shutter button, it's getting 20 pictures before that. And that means I could get it just before it takes off or just as it leaves in flight. Same thing with um, a bird flying, catching a fish. You, you usually push the shutter button just a second after the action that you want to capture. Well, this will give you 20, 30 shots before that, which is just amazing. I always wondered how that was done. So that's a real strong point of this camera. The other thing is, I was talking about the crop factor on this camera being 1.6, the M50 Mark II. The crop factor on the Olympus is two times, meaning the zoom lens is 100 to 400, but it's really like a 400 to 800 millimeter zoom lens on a full frame camera, which is just about all you'd need for birding. And I'm going to get something called the Teleconverter 1.4, which would give it another 0.4 reach on the 800 millimeters. Another great thing about this camera is it takes a bigger lens, which means despite it having a small sensor, I could get more light into the lens. And I tried it just last night on a tripod, and I could take three second shots on a tripod. So if I'm out at 7, 8 p.m. just before dusk, I'll be able to capture, let's say, an owl resting uh, in a tree ready for its fly out, which is just amazing. So each of these cameras has its own strength. Now, why do I go mirrorless cameras? There's not a lot of people on Facebook know this, but about two years ago, I was in bed for three months, and this was a favor from a chiropractor. He put me on a table, strapped my ankles in, and the table was hinged, and they moved me left and right by the legs. I thought I was fine, but a day later, I was in bed for three months. It was the most painful thing I had ever encountered. I was actually in tears. So I haven't reported this a lot on Facebook because musicians don't want to tell about their injuries because we want to work. If we recover, which I pretty much did, we don't want people to read an old post and think we're incapable of working. But it was really tough going for a while. In the third month, my doctor said, Richie, your left leg, even though you're getting better slowly, may lose all of its feeling and get prepared for an operation. I want you to speak to the doctor that will do the operation. I did that and spoke to him. But I started doing these McKenzie exercises where you're pushing your hip against the wall, really painful. And uh, it got better eventually. And I still have pain and sometimes it's really bad, but I discovered four new exercises for the piriformis muscle. It really helps. And I'm going to put a link. <laughs> this is not a uh, medical uh, treatise, but I will put a link on the McKenzie exercises for those of you that have a slip disc 
and also these four piriformis exercises, which I've seen no place else online. And uh, if you have this kind of problem, I hope it helps you. But make sure you check with your doctor or you take full responsibility, as I did, for your exercises. Now I'd like to talk a little to you about what I'm selling. Uh, I have the hooded merganser here. And this is a picture I took in Central Park, which I'm really proud of. And I put my photographs on t-shirts and on mugs. And you can see right here, this lovely photo is the red-headed duck. And I do the same thing. I put um, my own photos on cups. I love drinking coffee out of this cup. You could have tea, hot water, whatever you'd like. And I'll leave a link down below so you could order the t-shirts and the cups. And uh, this has become a passion of mine. I just love walking around and exploring different areas. I've gone to um, Lake Merritt in San Francisco and biked across the Golden Gate Bridge to take pictures of birds. And uh, I go to Central Park often. And I've been to Jamaica Bay Wildlife Refuge Center which is in between Brooklyn and the Rockaways at the Broad Channel um, stop on the A train. Not too hard to get to, and then I bike to the refuge center. I also go to New Jersey and uh, meet a friend and go to a state park, and I'll go birding there. So Central Park and Jamaica Bay Wildlife Refuge are actually super essential for the survival of birds and they're really necessary uh, that the birds could migrate here and breed and feed so I didn't realize that years ago as I said uh, earlier I saw the birds but I didn't really notice them but now I walk through Central Park and I see the carp they're huge they're spawning I notice the birds and I don't know why I like pictures more than just binoculars. I like to take a picture, I like to capture it, and I do get a thrill out of um, putting it up on Twitter or up on Facebook and letting my friends view it. I guess uh, being a musician, I could say I'm an uh, introvert and an extrovert. I was very quiet as a child, and sometimes I'm really quiet and uncomfortable around crowds or parties, but on stage, um, when I play trumpet, it's extrovert. The odd thing is a lot of my friends that I kayak with and the people that I meet in Central Park and go birding with don't know I play trumpet. And a lot of my friends that uh, are musicians don't realize my other hobbies. I sincerely believe as you grow older, you should try to do more and not less, but not in a, all my eggs are in one basket myopic way, but in a way that will help you become more of a well-rounded human being. So that's my goal, and that's why I go birding. These are the first shots of Sam Zambitos I had seen, and I immediately thought, hey, that's not fair. That's right from his backyard. Sam lives in Orlando and soon Mineola, Florida. But it's not that he lives in Florida that makes these spectacular shots. Besides being a fantastic trumpeter, he's an amazing photographer. It is your ability to frame the shot, get the right lighting, catch an unexpected pose, have patience and put in the time, and also do post-processing. That helps to make you a better photographer. Now, I'm not saying to be a birder you have to meet all these requirements, but they do help. I think the best thing is to go out with what camera you have and just take shots. In fact, many of my favorite shots are taken on the fly, so it helps to be a good improviser, to be a good birder. You'll notice the background blur or bokeh in Sam's pictures is very good. Much of this is due to a lower aperture of f4, 5, or 
Sam is mostly using a lens I hope to pick up soon. It's the Zuko Pro lens 40 to 150 millimeter f2.8. You see the smaller number aperture like f4, f5, f5.6 the more blur you get in the background and the smaller the aperture the larger the opening of the lens. Initially I bought this camera to take self-portrait shots, promo shots, and just as a walk around camera. These shots are from Center Park. I was just learning how to get the exposure and the focus correct. This is the west side of New York by the Hudson River. And then I got into birding. This is a yellow rumped warbler in Central Park. And this next picture is a prairie warbler that was just a few feet from me in the compost in Central Park. I was very lucky to get this picture. The yellow warbler in Jamaica Bay Wildlife Refuge. So you can get some pretty good shots with a 300 millimeter lens on a 1.6 crop camera, but you do have to be a bit close. I love this shot of the egret in the Central Park pool. I had the foresight to take this as a portrait shot. And this is also from the M50 Mark II camera. You can see the video quality on this camera is just spectacular. This is handheld and the stabilization is very good. This is a photo of the downy woodpecker in the Avodia feeders in Central Park and the bokeh is just perfect. So this shows what you could do with a one quarter size sensor in good light. And the zoom on this camera goes up to 1,365 millimeters. That's all the reach you'll need. When I began birding about a year ago, I was a little worried about what would I do during the winter months. Were there going to be birds in Central Park? And to my surprise, there were. There were plenty of raptors, like these red-tailed hawks. This beautiful picture is obviously autumn in New York. I want to show you what you could do with post-production. This is Geraldine in Central Park. I ran this through Topaz Denoise and then put it in Lightroom and adjusted the lighting, especially on Geraldine. So you could see even with a small sensor and not great lighting, you could save a picture. I was just amazed to see these greater yellow legs at the Jamaica Bay Wildlife Refuge. This was super cool as I had never seen a bird that looked like this. And back to Central Park. No, no one's getting murdered. It's little kids playing in the park. And this is Flacco, the Eurasian eagle owl that escaped from the Central Park Zoo. Actually, the zoo was vandalized. Some netting was cut and the owl escaped. So Flacco escaped from the Central Park Zoo and went just east of the Heckscher Playground. From there, we spotted him at Pine Bank Arch. Then Flacco decided to fly north. He went up the mall to the summer stage. And we also had a few spottings around the mall itself. But that clearly wasn't enough for Flacco. He took off going north from the mall to 106th Street and then went eastward to the lock and is currently being sighted at the compost. Flacco is a bit of an international hero here in New York City. 
He's been free for a full five months now. Flacco grew up in an enclosure the size of a city bus. When he first began foraging, he couldn't fly two city blocks without aborting his flight. Now he seems free and happy hanging out in northern Central Park. I was really happy to get these shots of the gadwall duck and the pool in Central Park. Using Pro Capture, when I pushed the shutter button, the camera took several shots before the bird took off. Here you see a swallow flying from right to left in the Central Park pool. A black and white warbler in an acrobatic pose. This is a male northern cardinal in the park. This was a cat bird in the Central Park lock and I just put it in the light room and brightened it up a little. This is from Jamaica Bay Refuge and it is a mute swan and the colors are just beautiful. I also like the background blur on this photo. The macro using the Zuko 100 to 400 millimeter lens is just amazing. And here is a red winged blackbird and I did a retouch on this. I could have shot this quicker at one two thousandths of a second, but I'm still getting used to the camera. This is the Gadwall duck in the pool, and the only thing I did was a little cropping. All of the shots you see from the Olympus camera are from JPEGs. The only retouching done was in the first three photos of the Gadwall duck taking off. Well, thank you for watching my video on why I started birding. I'll leave a link down below on the exercises I spoke of. And if you'd like to purchase a t-shirt or a coffee cup, I'll leave a link for that also. And remember, if you want to start birding, it's not about the equipment you have. Just get out there in nature and enjoy yourself, even if it's with an iPhone. Thank you for watching and happy birding.